good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us, so particularly if you're in Melbourne and, and locked up and, uh, and facing yet more online learning, which parents have mistaken for home schooling. Um, I'm, I'm Dorothy Hardenot. Uh, I was an English and ESL teacher for a very long time, and I ended my career uh, with 23 years as principal of Holroyd High School in Western Sydney. That's a disadvantaged school with a very high enrolment of asylum seeker and refugee children, maybe a little less now. Uh, I retired from teaching in 2018, which is why I'm looking so relaxed. Uh, I'm now ambassador for the Refugee Advice and Casework Service, which provides pro bono legal support for refugees and asylum seekers. And uh, I'm also the ambassador for the No Child Left Behind campaign. Uh, with me up in my right hand corner is Mandy Wells, who is the multicultural officer from the New South Wales Teachers Federation. Mandy taught even longer than I did at one school. She taught at the wonderful Fairfield Public School for 30 years, and she's taken over as multicultural officer in the Federation. Fairfield is a little bit south of where I was at Holroyd. Again, it's a school with a very high enrolment of refugee and asylum seeker children. So, Mandy, you want to say hello? Sure. So, um, hi everyone, and, and thanks for joining us tonight. I hope you can hear me okay. That's the classic quote of a Zoom meeting, isn't it? Can you hear me? Can you see what I'm sharing? But um, thanks for giving up your time. And as Dorothy said, um, my background is predominantly um, teaching asylum seekers, refugees and, and non-English speakers. So I've, I've deliberately dedicated my career to that. It's a passion of mine. And it's um, something that I've been doing for 35 years, but I deliberately chose to stay at the one school that had the highest intake of refugees and asylum seekers in a primary school in all of New South Wales. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say that I've had an incredible amount of um, uh, opportunity from doing that. And that opportunity has been uh, just what those communities give back to me. It's not all about what we can do for them. They give so much to us and so much to our country. And um, I'm really pleased to be here and working with Dorothy and Samuel on the No Child Left Behind campaign. So welcome everyone and thanks for having me. Oh, well, thank you, Mandy. Um, Holroyd had at one stage 10% of all the asylum seeker kids in New South Wales enrolled. So we probably had the highest proportion, uh, not the greatest number, that was Fairfield High School, but the highest proportion of refugees. I worked very hard for those kids. So I'm, I'm very, I know how, how wonderful Fairfield is and how important education is to all those kids. With us also is Samuel Dariel, who is the campaign, the campaigns and digital coordinator at the Refugee Council of Australia. He's a community organizer, uh, organizer rather, trainer and performer. Uh, his mother is a secondary English uh, teacher. So, uh, so, so Daniel's well aware of the stresses of, of teaching and things like that. We do tend to bring these things home with us. Um, uh, prior to his role at the Refugee Council, he worked for Jesuit Social Services where he coordinated a similar action to this in Catholic schools in 2016 with 121 schools participating. So uh, I'm going to start by acknowledging the original owners of this land. Sorry, Daniel, I did, I, you say something. Quick. Yeah, there, yeah, thanks. Or thanks. I acknowledge. That's all right. I'm, I'm much, much, you've got much more important things to say than I do. Um, yeah, no, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and uh, so, yeah, being this is our first kind of webinar, um, first kind of real uh, public um, facing kind of activity for this, um, for this, uh, rather an event for this campaign. So, thank you for joining us. Um, I just want to quickly let everyone know that we're recording this um, just so if people who couldn't attend today or the next webinar um, want to learn more, they can, um, they can watch it. So if that's a problem, just let me know or we'll turn the camera off and um, yeah. Other than that, yeah, let's get Don't on to put it. on your mask. Yeah, put on your mask indeed. Okay, so I would like to acknowledge the original owners of this land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and to any Aboriginal people taking part in this webinar. This, this
this campaign is about fairness. It's asking the government to extend basic safety net support to asylum seekers and to a very large number of refugees who are on temporary visas, who are living in our community, uh, particularly families with dependent children. And when, when the Prime Minister said that we're all in this together, he, um, he left out over a million people in the community from any form of uh, support. Uh, and that included uh, asylum seekers, refugees on, on temporary visas, and of course, people like international students and so on. Asylum seekers and refugees on temporary visas, however, have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, some don't even have work rights, but those who, who can work usually find work only in, in the very precarious casual sector, uh, often in service jobs, uh, because of their visa status, because they're not eligible for quite a few jobs. Most have lost those jobs in the economic downturn. Of course, what's happened over the last 24 hours in Victoria will have, will have really carried away a whole lot more people who were in employment up until now. Um, and they don't have any access at all to the safety net. They've been excluded from that. They are, are not allowed to access job keeper or job seeker. Uh, and uh, some of them, as you know, uh, lost their uh, access to the special benefit last year. In fact, the majority of asylum seekers are no longer able to access the special benefit. Uh, they, they are now totally reliant on charities for food and for basics. And some, some people, some of the people, particularly people who have been medevaced from uh, Nauru and so on extraordinarily, don't have access to uh, Medicare which uh, uh, to me is counterintuitive during a pandemic. Uh, they're estimated to be between something like 60,000 to 90,000 people. It's, it's quite a lot of people who are caught in a situation of whom some 16,000 are children. So without access to the safety net or uh, able to work, they face homelessness and destitution, uh, perhaps even uh, starvation if they can't get food handouts. I, I find it extraordinary that government policy would condemn people to destitution, especially children. After all, these are people who have sought our protection. As, as, a, as a former principal of a disadvantaged high school, I'm very aware of the impact of poverty on children. 65% uh, of the kids at Holroyd were in the bottom quartile of socioeconomic status on the Ixia and on any other um, any other criterion. Uh, asylum seeker children whose families uh, experience financial hardship at the best of times are particularly affected because they've also got to deal with trauma and loss, having to start their schooling up again, miss schooling, uh, learning a new language, and then, and then all, the, all the burden of anxiety that, that they carry for their families in, in an uncertain situation. So, for example, a lot of the families at our school couldn't provide three meals a day for, for their children. And so we, we ran a breakfast club <coughs> to ensure that kids had something to eat at the beginning of each day. Because as you know, if you're a teacher, children don't learn on an empty stomach. When schools closed down during the lockdown and, and, and children were not able to access these sorts of things, then some of those children didn't even have that additional meal each day. Families seeking asylum are part of the communities in which they live. Their children attend local schools. Uh, we, know these, we know these children, they're the children we teach. Uh, no Child Left Behind is seeking to mobilize school communities to stand in solidarity with children and their families in this situation. And so this webinar is going to talk about ways you can get involved in the campaign, walk you around the, the website. Uh, and if you can get involved, uh, then this is a, a very practical way that we can uh, show our support for a very vulnerable group of children. The, the No Child Left Behind campaign will culminate in a national week of events, uh, online and in person, in schools and education centres across the country during Child Protection Week, which is September the 6th to the 12th. We've chosen Child Protection Week to highlight the urgent need to extend safety net support to children and their families seeking asylum. You know, 
It's a type of neglect, isn't it? I was a mandatory reporter all those years, as, as most of you are, and, and neglect is a form of child abuse. It's, uh, uh, there are lots of things there, emotional abuse and so on, as we, as we all know. The No Child Left Behind campaign is led by the Refugee Council of Australia in co coalition with organisations like Refugee Advice and Casework Service, the Uniting Church of Australia, uh, the Asylum Seeker Centre, uh, the, Jesuit, the Jesuit Refugee Service, the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre, um, uh, Settlement Services International, the teacher unions in both, uh, in both uh, public and uh, private schools, uh, and, uh, and many others. There are over 200 organisations have signed uh, uh, the, letter, the letter to Parliament, for example, and have signed their support for this, this campaign and Nobody Left Behind, which is the other part of the campaign. Uh, so this, this coalition is supporting action by educators across Australia to ensure that no child or young person seeking asylum is, is, is abandoned during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I'll hand over to Daniel, as uh, Samuel, I keep saying that, because I know too many people call Daniel. No um, yeah, thanks so much for that wonderful introduction, Dorothy. Um, so we thought, um, yeah, one of the best ways to maybe give you a sense of the sort of issues that we're talking about, are, you know, um, to show you some videos um, directly from people and, and teachers affected. Um, but just to say that, yeah, I think, um, Early on in this um, campaign, we kind of realised that um, there were yeah about sixteen thousand children and young people seeking asylum who would be affected, and we knew immediately that educators would really be in many ways at the front line of seeing the kind of need um, that a lot of these families would be in, just by nature of the fact that they were, you know, when it was lockdown, they were the ones trying to connect those students into class, and when they didn't have internet and. Um, as things reopen, they're the ones seeing families struggle. Um, and what we're most concerned about um, is what will happen when the moratorium on evictions is lifted um, in most states across the country, which is at the end of September. Because what we know is that most of, for the most part, charities can cover people's food. Um, there, there, there's a lot of services out there that you know can provide emergency packages. Um, yeah, things that you might need, um, materials you might need in the home. But what just is, there's no way to fund is people's rent. Um, and that's why, you know, we have an income support program in Australia for what, so that when people lose their jobs, they have a way to pay their rent, they have a way to pay their bills. Um, and at the moment, people obviously, for the most part, can't get evicted because of the moratorium. But we know that a lot of people seeking asylum are in serious debt rental arrears at the moment. Some people have already relocated into, um, you know, garages or overcrowded housing, which we know is not what we should be, doing, people should be doing at a time like this. Um, so the time I think, you know, apart from being, you know, great because it's National Child Protection Week, it's also really urgent because only a few weeks after this week, we'll be seeing, I think, the real impact of what the government's policies mean but I will just share my screen so we can watch this video. Can you see this okay? Yep, it's coming through. Hi, this is Nadia Hendo. I am Ambassador for RAPS, Refugee Advice, Case Work Service. Um, I am a refugee, um, currently on a temporary visa and living in the ACT. Surely it has affected everybody in the community. 
challenge them with that. And we do need legal advice because we're scared. We're scared of a small thing that happens that could affect our visa application. Thank you for your continued support, supporting Rex. It is a tough challenge and it is a hard time, not only for us, but for refugees in my situation. Your support means a lot to Rex, and Rex's support means a lot to us. So please help us to get through this challenging time together. Cool. Obviously, that's a donation video from um, Rat, so you, you ignore that part of it. But I think Zaki is a really strong advocate um, for uh, refugee issues as someone directly impacted. Um, the next video I'm going to show you is one that, uh, that um, Mandy and the, the Teachers Federation helped us get together, um, which uh, is a bit closer to home in that it's um, testimonies basically from teachers um, about what they've seen um, during COVID-19. That's obviously um, hopefully gives you some context um, for the sort of you know on the ground impact. So as I'm sure probably um, some of you, oh, sorry, YouTube's just started playing the next video. Um, as I'm sure many of you probably are, are experiencing yourselves um, in your own work, um, the impacts on a daily basis. Um, so we going to talk through, I suppose, yeah, I mean, Dorothy's given a really great introduction to um, No Child Left Behind. Um, and just for some context um, from the Refugee Council's end, um, we've had, I think, significant um, traction with this campaign with the federal government. Obviously, it's a really crowded space at the moment. There's lots of campaigns going on and lots of people asking, particularly, for changes to the income support program. Um, but you know, I mean, this, the reality is that actually people seeking asylum have been um, forgotten and not supported by the federal government well before COVID-19 hit. And what COVID-19 has really done has exposed the, the gross disparities that we see. Um, and we really want to sort of, you know, bring attention to those publicly. Um, and as we said, 
we realized pretty early on that educators were going to be at the front line. So um, we um, have been working with schools from the get-go and moving towards this week, as Dorothy mentioned, the National Week of Solidarity. So we're going to just um, talk through um, what the week is just by showing you the website um, because we think that the website's a really, and it's designed to be a really useful resource um, that basically is able to sort of guide you through um, everything. But effectively what we really would love um, is for each of you, in whatever context that you're, you're working in um, or studying in, to participate in the week. And that, as we said, that, that can be online because obviously some of us, myself included, um, are in lockdown. It can be offline, as in you can organise an event at your school or university or other education institution. Or it can be, you know, sending out emails to your networks, inviting them um, to sign on to the statement. So let me get my screen up. So I'm not sure if everyone's seen this website, um, but we'll just talk you through the, the various stages of it. Um, so there's been significant media coverage around the campaign as well. Dorothy um, was on the Today Show, which is, let me tell you, the first time that we've ever got a segment on the Today Show <laughs> and she did an amazing job. Six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, we made sure it was the most retweeted uh, interview we've ever done. Um, and probably most of you are here because you signed on to our um, the joint statement, educator, parent, student um, joint statement already. Um, but that's obviously a key part of the campaign as well. And we're currently at around 700 signatories for that. Um, so, uh, Mandy, shall I? You, well, I'll just talk to this one quickly. Um, this is just a general petition that we've got for pe basically people who aren't educators, but it's, um, oh, Mandy, you, sorry, you, you did have a, a, a spiel about this. Did you want to? Uh, no, no, that's fine. I'll talk about the joint statement if that's okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so this, yeah, basically the petition is for the general public. We're delivering it um, during the National um, Week uh, of Solidarity. Um, and sharing it out far and wide. So if you know people um, who might be interested, you can direct them here. Um, I'll open this in a new tab. Um, educator statement. Yeah, you do this. Yep, so thanks, Samuel. So the joint statement is specifically for educators. It doesn't matter what sector. Uh, and we're asking that you uh, do sign on and your signature uh, requires you to determine, are you signing on as an individual teacher? Are you signing on as a representative of a workplace or an association? Or are you signing on in another capacity? Because there is quite a number of capacities where you just click the button that matches you. Now, the reason that I'd like to just um, go through it briefly is that everything in that statement uh, uh, matches what you heard from Dorothy uh, at the start where it sets the background for you and the campaign um, goals, basically securing that safety net and not leaving these children um, to having forced destitution at the hands of a government of a wealthy nation. Mm. Um, and furthermore, the, the medical side uh, during a pandemic, uh, it's unbelievable that we would have people unable to access Medicare and the PBS support that they require. Now, if you look here first, um, you have to select what matches you are you actually signing on as a parent of a student, an educator of a student, a principal or a deputy principal, uh, on behalf of an education institution or on behalf of an association of some description and at least a whole number of them. Now, once you choose your capacity for signing on, that will take you to a different page. So um, perhaps um, can we pretend that we're just signing on as a teacher? Yep. Uh, I'll have to fill out all the information. Yeah, just don't submit, hey? <laughs> so that's where you fill in your name, of course, and your contact email and a postcode, because um, if we want this to be tabled as a petition, it has to be identifiable with a postcode. And then you click the next button. And um, when you look here, it says, what's your role? And that's where um, you're deciding, are you signing on as as just yourself, so you say classroom teacher or executive teacher or yield teacher, whatever your capacity is there is what you're signing as. 
So Sam, would you like to be a classroom teacher? Mm -hmm. And then it asks you the question, are you able to publicly list your education institution on this joint statement? Now, Federation advises that if you are a public school teacher, that you do not list the name of your educational institution. We advise this because under the Code of Conduct for public schools, uh, you do not have the protection to speak on behalf of your school if you're just signing as a classroom teacher. Industrially, we have to have the protection of being an officer of the Federation or a Federation representative speaking on behalf of the Federation. So when it comes to this part, we ask that you say, you say no if you're a classroom teacher. And I've just, um, of course, you can fill in your suburb. Um, so wherever your school is, and then your state. And then this is a personal decision for you. Are you going to be interested in speaking to the media? However, again, I'm going to stress that Federation advisors, if you are speaking or uh, commenting to media, including social media, the advice is do not name your school. Speak on behalf of your opinion. Speak on behalf of what you know as a teacher, but don't name your school. So de-identify your school. And if you're taking a picture to put on social media, because part of the campaign we'll get to in a moment includes social media, then just make sure that you've de-identified the school so you don't accidentally take a photo uh, with the name of your school in the background, for example. So keep it de-identified. Great. Thank you, Mindy. Um, and maybe just if you're at uh, another education institution, and you, and you would know the you know, intricacies of your own education institution. No, I'm just, I'm commenting on the public schools, the Department of Education in New South Wales, in so much as um, public schools are bound by a code of conduct. Yeah. Uh, there are other institutions, of course, that um, have their own codes of conduct. Yeah. And you have to carefully check that. Yeah. Because this is what we call a political and a contentious issue. Mm. And before you could be, um, called on the code of conduct for bringing the name of your school into disrepute, for example. Um, it could be cautioned formally under the code of conduct if you name your school and the Department of Education um, takes issue to the comment you made with the name of the school there. So we do ask that you, um, we do advise that you de-identify for that purpose. It's your protection. Of course, you have your opinion and you're entitled to it and you're entitled to post that. Um, and you're entitled to speak that opinion. But just make sure that you don't name the education institution during that. Yeah, great. Yeah. But could I make a comment there, yeah. uh, Samuel? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, you notice that I have said uh, that, that I was at Holroyd High School. Uh, I'm retired, so, so uh, although I don't reveal confidential information, uh, that that was available to me during the time I was a principal. I I'm not covered by the code of conduct uh, uh, in my everyday life. So and then anyway, I'm I'm very well known as principal of that school when I was there. But it, it is a it is a real issue for for people. And uh, say you were a teacher at a Catholic school and um, your school decided to take part in this. There's there's one whole. Uh, diocese in Sydney, I think, that signed up. So, so then that that wouldn't be uh, so much of an issue. It's not an issue for people who are academics at, at university because of because of academic freedom uh, uh, and and so on. But it really is uh, for public schools, probably in every jurisdiction, they they tend to be risk averse. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, contentious issues are, are a problem. And can I just add that um, uh, Nazare made a comment and asked the question, is it okay to say you're um, working for the Department of Education or a public school? Yes, it is okay to say that. Um, you might have noticed in the video 
that the teachers who volunteered to um, contribute their comments said that they work in a school in southwestern Sydney or they work in a public school in the western suburbs. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay to say public school, Department of Education. It's just de-identify the school and, um, and go from there. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Andy and Dorothy. So um, we'll get on to um, I suppose, yeah, the, the, the main chunk of information around the National Week of Solidarity. Mm -hmm. um, so, to be honest, Dorothy's um, given a lot of this information already, but I think the idea is that you could direct someone to this page and would have more or less all the information that they really need um, to get involved. And we've tried to make it as easy as possible um, for anyone to get involved, whether you're a teacher, a student, um, a parent. Um, I was talking to you know someone from Mums Refugees who has wanted to share this information with their members um, who were part of a parents group at school. So I think um, there's lots of ways um, that people can get involved. Um, Mandy, do you want to talk to the sort of the, the key ways to get involved, or shall, shall sure. I? Yep, no, that's fine. So uh, if there's individual capacity and then there's um, group capacity as well. But if you notice, it's um, pretty clearly set out here on the website for you. And of course, if you want to get engaged in all of them, please feel free to do so. So the first um, thing that we are asking is, will you sign on to the education joint statement as either an educator, a parent, or a, um, a staff member in an institution or, or a carer of a student who attends um, an educational institution? And we've taken you through that already. And then there's a live link you can see at the bottom of number one. When you move on to number two, it says attend one of our online events. And, and if you notice down the bottom there in purple, it stands out that there are two different um, registration uh, links that are live links for you. And um, it, it explains those events if you're considering um, logging yeah. to there. But it also um, basically tells you that it doesn't matter where you are, because this is online, you can join in from wherever you are, even in lockdown, no matter what stage of lockdown that you're up to. Mm -hmm. um, so we found that that um, was probably the best way to engage people during these current circumstances so that um, we can get as, as high a capacity or maximum numbers as possible. So uh, if you were thinking of doing that, um, we'd also like you to consider making that known to the people you work with, making that known to um, your friends and family um, or to groups that you belonged to, um, if you're, you belong to any of the advocacy groups for refugees, asylum seekers, or for example, Angela for the Civil Liberties, Council of Civil Liberties. Um, and these are webinars that um, can, will also be streamed to Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, down number three, we have hold an event or an activity at your school. And this is the one that has the most comprehensive amount of resources available. Uh, Samuel's been working really hard to put together um, the suggested resources that we threw at him from every direction, um, where we tried to have a focus very similar to Refugee Week. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for schools or individual teachers to participate in an event or to use or utilize the resources that have been collated so that you can not only take action yourself, but you can be an educator and educate your students, educate your school, educate your friends, educate your staff, and make use of the wonderful videos that we have um, uploaded for you and make use of um, those resources either as an individual or a school event. So for example, you might want to host a lunchtime event. You might want to show one or two of the videos and then open up to the joint statement and seek the support of the people there to sign on. You might want to uh, have classroom activities like we do for Refugee Week. So you make use of videos, make use of books, make use of um, some of the movies even uh, that are available. And there is an extensive list of resources that we'll show you soon. And they also have links to other websites with lots of valuable resources that teachers could make use of. You might want to screen a video um, where at the end of that, you ask people to sign the petition. 
you might want to screen a video, uh, give a short talk, and then have the uh, letter writing to a federal MP. Uh, bombarding them with as much as possible during this week is our goal. Message abundancy is what teachers do for ELD students in the hope that they acquire English. Well, we need message abundancy, uh, abundancy for our politicians. Uh, we want to throw as much at them as we can during this week. And if you want to register your school involvement, there is a live link at the bottom there where it says register your school's involvement. And once you do that, you will receive a resource pack um, to the email that you provide. So I'm not sure if you wanted to open that up now. So yeah, just quickly. This one's, yeah, this one's fairly straightforward, um, similar themes, but I'm, I'm, I would say, yeah, just here. Um, uh, because, you're, because you're registering for a resource pack, yeah. um, that's not a contentious issue. Um, however, um, as long as there's no sort of statements or, or political yeah. alliance with this, if you're going to display this anywhere, Samuel, would you yeah. Well, that's why we've got this question here. Can we include your institution's name in the list of participating Excellent. schools? Good. So, so that's where you see them. Yep. Yeah. Um, otherwise, what we'll say is like, you know, um, schools across the country, including, you know, in these suburbs. Um, yep. So this is all, yeah, this is all pretty straightforward. It's, it's all, and it's all very just, you know, estimates really um, to help us uh, understand um, what kind of events are happening around the country. And if you wanted to share photos, just like Refugee Week, for example, um, I noticed that there was a capacity to do so. And again, that's, there's nothing um, contentious about doing so. Just make sure that you're not identifying the school or the student when you do that. And if there is um, a photographic, um, if there's photographs being taken off students, um, try not to take their face because if their face is in view, they must have permission to be published on the internet. So our advice as Federation is de-identify students. So take from behind, take from above, don't take directly face on. Yeah, advice. Yeah, I just make a comment uh, on, on this. If you have, if you have uh, I'm talking here about secondary school, if you do something like run a forum or run um, a seminar day or something like that and you, you or a debate and, uh, and uh, you're challenged about the educational value of that. Uh, get your head teachers to, to tie it into the curriculum. We did that at Holroyd very effectively. We had a, we had a, a big workshop uh, with Tom Keneally speaking and um, David Isaacs and people like that. And a member of parliament wrote to the Minister for Education and complained that we were uh, running political events in the school. The deputy principal had cunningly tied the whole thing in to the, um, the HSIE syllabus. And so, and so she was able to argue very, very strongly for every bit of, uh, every bit of what happened as, as part of a, an educational process. So, so where, where you where you are dealing with some things like this, it's not a bad idea to have a look at your, um, at your syllabuses and to, uh, uh, and, and to uh, do that sort of thing, because it's a great strong answer to, a, a, a political, to political snooping. <laughs> Good one. So we're trying to get, um, we're aiming for 50 schools nationally. Um, now that might, that won't be 50 schools and event, um, events in schools, it might be, you know, the, 20 events and 30 schools attend the webinars or whatever but I think that would really I think 50 would be a really um significant demonstration by kind of the you know education community that um you know leaving children and families behind like this is not okay so let's go on to the resources that we have available for use um so this section is is rather new which is why it's um a bit uh, small, but it will be populated. Um, and basically they're just stories that you can use um, from people that we've reached out directly about this campaign. And they've um, something that we're really passionate about um, at the Refugee Council um, is not speaking for people. So um, these are sort of, um, both of these stories are written by 
the, the people um, that are affected. Oh, there's some scribbling going on. Um, uh, let's, so there's got some red, can people see that red scribbling? I don't know if that's me or... Yeah, it looks like you're drawing on your screen. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. You got your crayons I'll just, out. I'll reshare my screen again and I'll... <laughs> um, Samuel, you might be getting Zoom bombed. <laughs> Zoom bombs. Oh. What does that mean? I'll, uh, I'll Google it. Uh, we've had some at you in the School of Social Sciences. Yeah, right. And people come in and start drawing on the whiteboard. <laughs> Gosh, I know, I can't even imagine. My, my mum's talked about the, the pain of teaching online. <laughs> <laughs> um, so re the resources that are on offer. So we try to yeah, come together with a really comprehensive set of resources, but not sort of um, overwhelming. Like we don't want to sort of provide you with every single thing that there ever was um, around refugee issues in Australia. Um, and I think the main thing will be these videos. Um, now, one of them you've watched already, which was one of the ones from the teachers, but we're in the production stage of um, producing two um, high quality, high quality. Um, videos um, about the, uh, directly from families impacted. Um, now, they're both two families in Sydney that basically lost all their work, um, most of their work around uh, as a result of COVID, um, <laughs> one of four kids. Um, at various ages and they've basically just been left with nothing and again really really scared about what's going to happen come the end of September um, and I think those videos will be really eye-opening for any kind of students or teachers or staff um, so they'll, they're going to be included in the pack um, there'll be the, a couple of ones from teachers one of the ones you saw and another one and then um, the last set are not specific to um, No Child Left Behind, but they're kind of educate. They're, they're from the face-to-face -face program, which is the Refugee Council's um, education um, program. Um, and they're basically kind of introductory um, videos around what it means to be a refugee, what it means to be seeking asylum, um, you know, what are the kind of uh, situation people often find themselves in. Um, and just, I mean, we've kind of, uh, as, a, as a goodwill, um, provided that because we think it would be really important. Um, and I suppose, yeah, then if it's at all an incentive, that, that sort of package would normally cost around $350, um, but it's free for any school participating in the National Week of Solidarity. Um, it's a range of classroom resources that we've provided here. Um, I won't speak to all of them because there's quite a lot, but as you can see, there's one from, you know, the Victorian Curriculum Assessment Authority. Um, this one is the New South Wales, Road to Refuge is the New South Wales Government Program. Um, and you can see there's all sorts of other kind of um, organisations that have produced um, a lot of resources. And I'm sure probably some of you would be well aware of the um, resources that are out there. But we think this is a really good place to start um, for classroom resources. Um, Sam, can I just add that some of them you've rightly mentioned are from the Department of Education in Victoria and in New South Wales. So there is no issue with showing those to kids. They're straight from their internet. Yeah. Um, so don't feel that you can't link this into any of curriculum areas. The department's already done it for you. Yeah. And, you know, the hook of National Child Protection Week, I think, is also a really strong one because that is a, you know, a, an event in the Australian calendar um, that is about marking child protection. And these are, as Dorothy said, issues of child protection. Um, there's some assets that you, design assets that you can use if you wanted to, you know, um, run a poster making competition at your school. Um, you can include the campaign logo. We've got some images that you can use if you want to promote the campaign on social media, whatever you want to do with that. There's a social media kit with some um, sample tweets and Facebook posts if you wanted to post those. Um, this is um, sort of similar to the classroom resources, but they're specifically videos that you could watch. So 
if you wanted some more videos of um, people speaking directly of their experience, there's a range here. If you wanted something a bit more, um, like perhaps this is for senior students or like at a university level, um, these are panel discussions from our conference, Refugee Alternatives Conference this year, um, that really talk about, you know, the nuances, I suppose, of, of what it means to have, you know, to be someone of this experience. Um, and then there's a range of films that you can, um, that you could show, documentaries, miniseries, this stateless one on ABC, you probably know. Um, there's a whole bunch of things there um, that you could show. Um, I won't go into these, but there's also some podcasts if that was um, something that worked for, um, for your school. Um, I will talk to this one because we think that this could be a really great activity to run um, and could form part of, say, a civics class, social politics, which would be to get students to write letters um, to their local MP or the Minister for Immigration, whatever, whatever, they, whatever you sort of identify as being um, the most appropriate. Um, and it's just some really easy um, guidelines as to how you would do that. Obviously, finding who you would write to, um, introducing your letter um, as to why you're writing, and then sort of adding some personal reasons. Um, and that you might do across, uh, you know, a whole class or a social justice group. Um, it might be within the classroom or in a lunchtime activity. Um, but I think something that would be really valuable. Um, we've also suggested that you might be able to run an art project. Um, there's not really any set instructions, but I just wanted to, Dorothy connected uh, me, um, or connected the campaign um, to a, a colleague that she has in South Australia, and um, this young 13 year old girl, Georgia Mundy, produced this artwork. Um, and I think that it's a really, it's a really powerful work that I think um, reflects what could, you know, what, what kind of work could be created um, in, a, in a student art project. Um, and it could be yeah, responding to a particular prompt. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, and here's some more information about the issues um, on the Refugee Council website. And then there's some other useful websites that you can access, um, which basically are just things like UNHCR and UNICEF. Pretty straightforward, and we'll keep we'll keep adding resources to this website as we go along. Um, but hopefully, at, at the outset, that provides a really solid base um, for you to kind of um, potentially organise an event, how you know, however big or small, um, uh, in your communities. Any uh, questions? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Are, are there any are there any questions? I I think it's important to to share things with people in your networks. The more, the, the, and we've got that capacity now with social media, we didn't have before. Uh, I've already been sharing this. I've shared some information on my Facebook and my LinkedIn, and I revived my Twitter account. I usually loathe Twitter, but I revived it so that I could share things. And there was an immediate response from people both on Facebook and, uh, and on LinkedIn to to the uh, things that I put up. Uh, I think it's, it's worth thinking too, uh, that you might, for example, you might want to submit a question to Q&A on the ABC or, uh, or write to the drum or one of those, uh, one of those things, uh, ring, ring up, uh, ring up a, um, a shock jock. <laughs> I, well, I say that in a humorous way, um, but, uh, but there, there, the, the important thing is to share and get lots and lots of signatures because the signatures say to the politicians that there's disquiet about things out there. Last night um, or yesterday, I saw Morrison, I think, has said that people on temporary visas might be included in the, um, in the, uh, uh, the $1,500 emergency uh, payment to people who'd lost their jobs in uh, in, in uh, Victoria. Uh, if that's the case, then that's that's a sort of glimmer of uh, of light at the end of the the tunnel because that would be the first time that they recognised that those people needed support. So, mm. uh, so I think anything you can do is really important. But use the resources here. Uh, 
various groups like the Human Rights Commission uh, are aware of the campaign and uh, are supporting it. The, if you go onto the websites that are suggested in that list, you'll find that there's, there's a great deal there of, of, of interest and groups like Human Rights have, um, uh, have their own education materials which are available to people and which are very, very useful. I think often teachers don't know about those sorts of things, but they're actually uh, really helpful in, in doing this. And, you know, think, think of what your kids, you might, you, might, you might, for example, in primary school, where if you have the advantage of an ethics uh, scripture class, you might, you might think of posing an ethical question about how, how people can be left out uh, when governments are supporting people through a major crisis. Uh, there, there, are, there are a whole lot of things that, that, that you can do uh, uh, at, at every level of the education system. Um, <clears throat> and I, that's why, Karen, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about, uh, about, um, about those people who are marooned in tertiary education, uh, for example. So, any questions from people? Comments? This is our first webinar, so we're not we're not really good at this. But anyway, and I noticed um, a very long comment there, and, um, from yeah. and from I couldn't agree more about Peter Dutton. In fact, yeah. very polite. <laughs> yeah. Well, do people think this is something that um, they could run in their you know, yeah. schools, universities? Um, in their communities? Is it something that could fly, do you think, in the, in the time like it's about to take? I, I have written, I'm part of the um, Refugee Education SIG, the national one, Karen, and I was one of the first people part of that. I have sent quite a long, uh, detailed account of all of this to that SIG. I, I distributed that went out yesterday to everybody around the country who's involved in that particular uh, sink. So that's something you can do. I mean, you, you, you just get on to, um, to your networks and say, look, here's, here's the website mm. for RACOA. Here's the website for RACS. Here's the website for No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. Take it and use it, share it. Um, share it with all your friends, get them to sign. That's, that's what's important. No, I think you're right, um, Dorothy. Um, we um, are currently working here in Victoria. I'm part of a, um, a, a progressive synagogue. And there's about 40 volunteers in that synagogue who are now cooking and delivering food and material supplies on a weekly basis to um, students, students' families and um, university students who have no income. So we're coming across students that haven't eaten for three or four days. We've got students living in cars. Um, we've got one student who actually lives on our campus in a van that we've managed to rehouse. Um, so we're seeing, we're right at the front line and every week, um, and we're having to travel around um, all parts of Melbourne wearing masks and letters to say that we're allowed to travel outside our five kilometre zone to deliver emergency aid. Um, we had one of our students today who's a single mother who's got a, a child with a disability and we've only just managed to get her free medication for her daughter and a wheelchair mm. because she wasn't provided even with that and she's a full-time student at our university and our university had to advocate the case manager for all of that through the children's hospital mm. um, because there is absolutely no support mm. at all for any of the students our students um, so it's not just the deacon students we provide support to we're providing support to students across all universities in victoria if we can reach out to them and i think we've probably delivered over two and a half thousand cooked meals in the last three months and um, groceries uh, on a weekly basis to um, probably 100 families it's amazing Karen. and that's all based on um, people donating money and time and doing online Coles orders to be delivered. Somebody given up their garage to provide um, storage space and we go there every week and it's like a um, um, 
a very smooth running operation now. We've got it all, all the logistics worked out, um, so it works beautifully. But it's every single week, increasingly, we're getting demand um, from schools, teachers, students, families, fa friends of families, um, and when we can track down the international students, or not the international, the, the refugee students, we're finding um, five or six or seven of them living in two bedroom tiny rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is quite dire at the front line. Yeah. I, I figured when I was principal that I had two, two areas that I had to work in. I had advocacy for, uh, for the, the, the um, asylum seeker and refugee students in, under my care. Uh, which was really important and I stretched public comment about as far as you could stretch it in that period um, and was only wrapped over the knuckles a few times uh, but also practical help and practical support so we had so many children who, d who really who didn't have three meals a day they maybe had one and and it was pretty skimpy and so we we really had to step in you know you had to provide clothes and and sometimes bedding um, kids who became homeless, you needed to pay the bond for, uh, for, for them and things like that. I had a very large welfare budget um, and, uh, and, and that's important. So schools mustn't, mustn't uh, forget that with, with lockdowns and with children out of school, it's not just a question of not being able to access the internet, it's actually sometimes really basic food and things and you have to be on the lookout for for child abuse that can happen where people are under enormous pressure. Uh, and, and of course, when kids come to school, you can see those things. You can see where a kid's been, you know, got a black eye and something of that kind. But when they're, when they're locked up at home with people who are frightened uh, and, and hungry and, and, and very fearful, uh, all sorts of things can happen. When you, you may find that uh, your asylum seeker people in particular are very unwilling to speak out and be identified because they're actually fearful of mm. a vindictive mm. um, Department of Home Affairs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're frightened of consequences for themselves if yeah. they speak out. So when Zaki Haidari is speaking, he's actually being enormously courageous. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're seeing that too, because we work very closely with the Salvation Army um, asylum seekers. Right. I'm, Ken, I'm, I'm just conscious that we've already gone a little bit over our, our meeting time. I just want to respect everyone's time. Um, but maybe if, if people do want to hang around, um, we can. Anyone who, who does want to hang around, we can continue to chat. Um, but for those who, um, yeah, do need to head off, um, I completely understand. And um, please, yeah, have a think about, you know, being involved um, in the National Week of um, Solidarity. And if you've got any questions, feel free, um, yeah, to, to email me or um, uh, just, you know, contact, contact us via the website. There will, be a there will be a further webinar on the 19th of August be, yeah. for teachers to get involved and we'll have more stuff on the uh, website by then. And it may be that you'll have thought of uh, questions or you think of gaps in what we're providing and things like that. If you get in touch with Samuel, uh, you you uh, you have really useful resources that you think should be there, then you could provide that information to him, and we'll put them up on the website because this becomes then a very useful uh, resource for teachers generally. Yeah, absolutely. So can I just interrupt before I go? Do you mind if we then circulate this because you know my network? I mean, I, I'm connected to as, as I think we know a lot of, lot of teachers as well. I'm yes. sure that they would love to get access to your resources Absolutely. as part of some teachers and tools. So I'd love to steer them. So Absolutely. I might just, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, Samuel, Absolutely. that'd be great. I'll do that. I'll do that first thing tomorrow yeah. Yeah. and um, get that circulating for you. That'd Maritza, be great. Maritza, the, the, um, the website and the RACOA website and the yep. RAC website, Human Rights Commission, all of that stuff's in the public domain. Mm, yep. All okay. of it is accessible. There's nothing secret or confidential about it. Can all right. be shared, and uh, and and anyone can sign uh, the petition as an individual. Mm. The more people, the merrier. Yep. No, that'd be great. Yeah, did you have something quickly? Yeah. Can I just make a comment because I do have to head off. So, yeah. um, thanks everyone for your time and for having me as part of this Zoom. But before I go, I'd also like to mention that. Any teachers who want to engage 
um, in this campaign at an association level should take this information to the next association meeting and then move a motion that their association sign on to the campaign as well mm. and then disseminate that information that way. And the Federation's website will be um, um, giving some information to our members in the next coming weeks and especially during that particular week of action because the Federation has endorsed this campaign. Awesome. So That's thanks wonderful. everyone, but I really do have to head off now. Thanks Mandy and thanks to everyone for joining. Um, if you uh, want to stick around and keep chatting, that's great. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining and um, yeah, I'll send a little follow-up email um, after this.